Good day everyone. Welcome to lecture 18 of this course on computer organization and architecture. In this particular lecture, we will continue the discussion of our previous lecture that is related to the SRAM memories and then we will discuss about the DRAM memory. We discussed about the sequential logic elements. We first go through the registers and we said that D flip flops are used to make registers and each D flip flop is created using 16 transistors. Okay. So to design a memory, we said that we require a memory cell that should be made of lesser number of transistors to save the area and power. So for that purpose, we said that one kind of memory cell is based on inverted uh, in, cross coupled inverters which we called an SRAM cell and each SRAM cell is of uh, is made of six transistors and each SRAM cell can store one single bit. So after that we discussed that how we can design a larger memory using SRAM cells and one such design we discuss how to create 16 cross 8 memory. 16 cross 8 is so this will be 2 raised power 4 2 raised power 7 or we can say 128 bit memory so 16 cross 8 means that each row stores 8 bits okay or we we can say that we can retrieve 8 bits at a time okay and total number of rows is 16 so here we have 16 rows and each row contains 8 sram cells Okay. Now let's say address comes. Now address is 0011. So what is 0011? Since there are 16 rows, so that means we have to uh, we have to address uniquely 16 different locations. 16 different locations can be addressed using 4 bits. So let's say address comes 0011. 0011 is 3. Okay. So the decoder will convert these 4 bits into an output. That means it will choose word line 3. So it will activate word line 3 and the SRAM cell is connected to that word line will get activated. Okay. So if it wants to write data in those SRAM cells, what it will do that let's suppose it activated this particular row of cells. Activated means these bit lines will be connected. The switch is connected. The switch is connected to these bit lines will be uh, turned on so these bit lines will be activated for these particular group of cells okay so here we will have a write circuit write circuit for each baseline, uh, bit line for a pair of bit lines we will have a write circuit let's say we want to write 8 bits 8 bits 00110011 okay we want to write these 8 bits in these 8 SRAM cells. So we will here this right circuit will write 0, this 0, then the next will write 0, the next one will write 1. Writing 0 means right circuit when write is 0, that means it will turn this bit line as 0, 0 voltage, and this bit line will be a positive voltage. So since this bit line is connected to this SRAM cell, all other cells, SRAM cell is connected to this particular bit line will be disconnected because their switch will be in off mode. So this particular cell will get zero. Likewise, this particular cell will get zero. The third will get one and similarly other particular cells. So this is for writing data. So for writing data, each bit line is connected to a write circuit. So we have a write circuit here. A write circuit. Now let's say we want to read data. For reading data, what we are doing, we are first activating the word line. Activating the word line means the char is stored or the voltage stored in this particular bit line will get on this particular, in this particular SRAM cell will get on this bit line. Okay. Similarly on its complement forum. So at the end, we will have a sense amplifier. Sense amplifier. Basically, sen what did this sense amplifier does? It senses the voltage difference between these two bit lines. Okay. Based on the difference, it amplifies that particular difference. 
okay so that it can clearly find out what the difference is and based on this difference it can determine whether this particular cell stores one or zero so every bit line these a combination of bit lines is, is connected to a sense amplifier so we have a sense amplifier at the end okay and the use of these sense amplifiers is at the time of reading data so when we want to read data we first activate that particular line word line we will the voltage on in this particular sram cell voltage or something that is stored basically we are storing the voltage okay so that voltage stored it gets on to these bit lines and sense amplifier senses the difference between two these two bit lines and based on the on the difference it can determine what type of voltage is stored in this sram cell whether we have stored one or zero okay so the complete sram array this is a complete sram array that stores 16 into 8 uh, bits okay 128 bit in this organization this is called a organ memory organization so 16 cross is the memory organization so 16 are the rows and 8 is the number of cells that we can read together okay so using the same procedure same method we can design larger uh, we can design for example we have to design a larger memory organization here we are uh, we are making 16 cross 8 now for example we have to create uh, let's say uh, we have to create a large memory let's say memory is 2 kb small b it is 2 kb okay for designing a 2 kb sram memory okay 2 uh, kb or it is equivalent to 2 kb will be equivalent to 2 kb divided by 8 bytes 2k divided by 8 bytes 2k is equal to 2 raised power 7 bytes. Okay, 2 raised power 7 is 128 bytes. So we have to create a memory for 128 bytes. How uh, how can we create a memory for 128 bytes? Uh, it is not 2 raised power 7. Basically, it is 2 raised power 8, 256 bytes. so how we can create an sram memory that is of 256 bytes the idea is sim uh, the same that we did in the previous scenario previous scenario was how many bytes 16 bytes because 16 cross 8 bits that means 16 bytes so here we have 256 bytes 256 bytes we can say that we will make 256 rows and each row will contain 8 bits or 8 sram cells so this complete memory will store 256 cross 8 bits that will be equal to 256 bytes how are if and and if you if you can see here uh, what will be the address how many bits are required for the address address should determine 256 rows 256 rows will be 8 bits so address is of 8 bits okay likewise this is 2 kb let's say i have to create a memory 2 kilobytes okay for creating a 2 kilobytes memory okay 2 kilobytes memory means that i will have 2k rows and each row contains 8 cells so what will be the address the address will be 2k 2k rows means 11 bits so address will be of 11 bits so we require 11 bit addresses and 11 bit address address bus we say and since how many bits we are reading the data data should be of 8 bits or we can say we require a data bus of 8 bits let me repeat it again so i am saying that if we have to design a larger memory let's say 2 kilobytes and we are saying that each time we are reading and writing a single byte okay in that particular scenario we require 2k rows and each row stores how many bytes 8 bits or we can say 
one byte. That will be equivalent to eight SRAM cells. Okay. So for this particular memory, as we can see that how many address lines are required, we require 11 address lines. Because 11 bits can determine 2K rows. 2K rows will be 2 into 2 raised power 10. It will be 2 raised power 11. Okay, so for determining 2 raised power 11 rows, we require 11 address lines. Or we can say our address bus is of 11 bits. Okay, and our data bus. Data bus means that after reading the data, we have to pass that bus on some wires. The combination of wires carrying the data is called a data bus. So our data bus will be of 8 bits. Okay. So you can see this kind of organization. This, this will be 2K cross 8. This organization. Organization of SNM. This memory will be like this. We will have a large one dimension. One dimension will be how many rows? 2K. So from this dimension, we have 2K rows. And from this dimension, we will have only 8 columns. So the memory will be uneven. Uneven in the sense, one dimension will be very large. Another dimension will be very small. Also, let's say I have to read two consecutive bytes, byte 1 and byte 2. For that particular scenario, I have to first activate the line, activate that particular line which contains this particular byte and then activate another line, the consecutive line which contains this byte. Okay, and if I have to read another consecutive byte, byte third, then I have to activate another line uh, for this particular byte, byte three. So for reading consecutive bytes, one one disadvantage I am saying that using this memory organization. Okay, <clears throat> in this memory organization, there is uneven uh, dimensions. One dimension is very large, and another dimension is very small. And another thing is that if I have to read consecutive bytes, then I have to activate word lines again and again. Okay. And activating the word line again and again means getting the charge from the SRAM cells, then sensing the uh, voltage difference between the two bits and then reading the data. Okay. So there came another organization, which we also called 2.5D organization. Where in a instead of reading one byte at a time, we are reading multiple bytes at a time. Multiple bytes at a time. Okay. In previous organ in previous organization, we were reading one byte at a time. One byte means eight bits or eight SRAM cells were connected to a word line, and that word line was activating those eight particular SRAM cells. However, we want that let's read multiple bytes at a time. Okay. But actually the output will be only one byte from those particular bytes. Let's say I am reading four bytes from these. I am reading these four bytes together. After reading the four bytes, I will choose one byte from these four bytes. One byte, whichever is required. Okay. Based on the need or based on the address, I will choose one particular byte. If I need consecutive byte, byte 2, then I don't have to activate the word line again. In a steed, I will check from these four bytes what is the next byte and I will read that particular next byte. So four bytes I can read consecutively, one after the other. The only thing that I have to do, I have to read these four bytes together in one go, then I can read them one after another if I, if that is required. And in computer architecture domain, this is the most frequently operation that is done that if we are reading one byte, there is multiple chances that we will require the next byte as well. For example, our word size is of four bytes or our instructions are, are of four bytes. So if we have the previous organization, this for example, cross eight. 
so in this particular organization reading four bytes means that we have to first activate one word line read one byte then activate another word line read another byte then third line read another byte okay so we have to read bytes again and again however in this 2.5d organization 2.5d organization as i said means have reading multiple bytes at a time okay so i can read four bytes at a time so after reading four bytes at a time i will store these four bytes in some register and from the, that particular temporary location i can read bytes one after the another okay so what i am saying here that in our previous organization so this was our one row and we said that in one row we have eight sram cells so in a state of having eight sram cells let's keep 32 sram cells in a single row 8 8 8 okay so let's say i have to create 2k 2 kilobytes memory in the previous organization how many rows we are required 2k rows and each row stored how many by how many bytes one byte in this particular organization i am saying that each row stores 32 bits 32 bits so how many rows will be there since the memory is of 2k bytes so rows will be 2k bytes divided by 32 and that's equal to 2 raised power 9 so 2 raised power 9 rows will be in this particular in this uh, particular address oh, sorry in this particular memory so that means 9 bits are for address address means giving the particular line and after reading these 32 bits together these 32 bits or we can say four bytes together so i am reading four bytes this is my sram array so here we have a decoder decoder takes the row address Okay, row address. So based on the row address, it chooses one of the rows, and each row contains how many bytes? Four bytes. So these four bytes are read in this temporary location. Four bytes. Okay. So all four bytes are here: byte one, byte two, byte three, byte four. now we want we want to send one byte at a time so it is not necessary that we will require all the four bytes together there are some scenarios where we will require only one byte okay so let's say we require byte 1 okay? so these four bytes will have its address so this will be 00011011 okay so for choosing the byte from the bytes that we are uh, that we are read from the memory we then give a column address to this so row address where here was choosing one of the row one of the row but column address chooses one of the byte why it is called a column address because here if we if we divide these this memory into bytes so this will be one byte one column is one byte second byte third byte four byte so every column here stores eight sram cells okay so we are getting the four bytes from four columns okay and for choosing one byte from these four bytes we require a column address so column address is given to this particular structure and based on the column address we will determine one of the byte that is required so we choose a subset of columns to read or write so we can if if the column address is 01 that means we will read this particular byte and give give this byte as an output byte 2 okay so this organization is called 2.5d memory organization or we can also uh, write it uh, write this in 
in the in the particular format for example this 2 raised power 9 is 512 512 cross so inside we have uh, 32 32 we can write 4 cross 8 4 means there are 4 bytes we are reading at a time and each byte is of 8 bits uh, we know that each each column is of 8 bits so using this particular organization you can you can design larger uh, we can say you can design larger memories for example let me give one example 512 cross 8 cross 8 what is this organization this organization says that we have 512 rows and each row contains these uh, amount of uh, SRAM cells so how many SRAM cells 88 64 SRAM cells so we can read 64 bits at a time okay 64 bits means 8 bytes we are reading at a time and reading 8 bytes so from these 8 bytes we have to choose one particular byte and from 8 bytes to choose one particular byte we will require how many bits 3 bits so column address will be 3 bits okay and row address will be 512 is 2 in raised power 9 that means 9 bits so column address is 9 bits and uh, sorry row address is 9 bits and column address is 3 bits okay so let me summarize this so our this is our SRAM cell this is our SRAM array okay so this SRAM array gets two addresses or we can say it gets the address this SRAM cell okay let me write it here this is my decoder and this gets the address so based on the address this decoder chooses one of the rows so this address can be either a row address or a column address if it is a row address then th then we have to choose one of the row from this SRAM array and read data in a temporary location okay that means it let's suppose it get x bytes it read x bytes at a time after row address we will send on the same bus same bus we will send a column address so first we were sending what row address on the same bus or, or on the same line we were sending the row address and based on the row address we were selecting one of the rows from where we were reading how many bytes x bytes now from these x bytes we have to read one byte and for reading one particular byte we require what address column address so on the same address line we will send now the column address the decoder will convert that column address and chooses one of the byte from these x bytes so now decoder has to differentiate when it is receiving the row address and when it is receiving the column address because decoder doesn't know whether the address that is coming whether that is a row address or a column address so decoder decides differentiates between the row address and column address using two control signals one control signal is called row address row and another signal is called column address row RAS this is CAS so these are the two control signals and basically these are active low signals both are active low signals active low means if RAS signal is zero RAS signal is zero the decoder itself understands that the address that is coming that is the row address if it is one that means it is not the row address column address strobe likewise if CAS is zero that means the address that is available on this address line is the column address okay and if it is one it says it is not the column address okay so decoder gets two control signals one is RAS 
and another is CAS, column address strobe and row address strobe. So row address strobe and column address strobe are two control lines, are, are, are two control signals that informs the decoder the type of address that is carried by this address line whether the address is row address or the column address. So whenever we have to read data, we first insert row address strobe and send a row address. Okay. After sending a row address, it selects one of the row. Then we insert column address strobe, this control signal and send which address column address. And based on the column address decoder chooses one of the bytes from these x bytes okay so this was all about the sram memories and 2.5d organization okay so before concluding about the sram uh, memories so uh, there is a small uh, sm we can say a small uh, <sighs> so before concluding sram memories so uh, let's uh, let's So before concluding SRAM mem memories, I have to discuss one small enhancement that can be done. For example, in reading the data, okay, reading the data from SRAM cells, we have to read data. So these are two bit lines. For reading the data, as I said, that we have a sense amplifier. And this sense amplifier senses the voltage difference between these two lines bit lines and based on the voltage difference it decides whether the uh, whether the uh, whether that particular sram cell stores one or zero however if you could have seen in the previous examples for example here this sram array if you can see that each bit line is connected to large number of sram cells okay so the size of bit line is very large as compared to the sram cell so charging this large bit line from the voltage stored in the SRAM cell, it takes some time because the voltage stored by SRAM cell is very small and using that particular voltage to charge a large bit line, it takes a lot of time. Okay, so we have to wait till the voltage stabilizes on these bit lines. So that means there is some inherent delay in SRAM cells. So to decrease this delay, what we do, we pre-charge the bit lines. What is that meaning? That when we want to read data, before activating the lines, before activating that particular SRAM cell, okay, what we are doing, we are pre-charging bit lines, this, this bit line as 0.5 volt and this as 0.5 volt. Both are 0 0.5 volt. This is pre-charging. Okay. After pre-charging, we are activating the line, activating the cell. Now this cell, if it contains positive voltage, that means it stores one. This voltage will go up because this will add to this particular voltage and this voltage will go down. Okay. So this SRAM cell has is not required to charge the bit line by a large portion. By a small portion, it can increase its voltage and it can decrease the voltage of another bit line. And sense amplifier can, can clearly take these two voltages and compare the voltages and can find out whether it is storing one or zero. Okay, so pre-charging is one of the enhancements that is done to decrease the reading time from the SRAM arrays. Okay, so what we are doing in SRAM, so why there is a need of a pre-charge? There is need of pre-charge because bit lines are very large and to charge the bit line by the SRAM cell, it takes large amount of time. So to decrease that amount of time, we pre-charge the bit lines and the functionality of SRAM cell then after that particular pre-charging is to 
इंक्रीज वन बिट लाइन एंड डिक्रीज अनदर बिट लाइन decrease the voltage on another bit line and then sense amplifier can easily uh, find out the difference between the two bit lines and can give us the output okay so pre charging circuits are also embedded in sram arrays so this was all about the srams the different types of organizations that are uh, that are po possible using srams how we can create large memories using srams and why there is a need of row address strobe column address strobe and what is a row address column address decoder so these th things i hope you have understood in great detail so the next the next part of this particular lecture is to discuss another type of memory called dram okay we saw that flip flops each flip flop or a single flip flop d flip flop for storing one bit we require 16 transistors how to decrease the number of transistors to store a single bit we came up with the idea of sram cells so where six transistors can be used to store a single bit to further reduce the number of transistors we have a dram cell in dram cell the bit is stored based on a charge we in dram cell we store charge if the charge is stored that means that dram cell stores one if there is no charge in the dram we say it stores zero and we know that for storing a charge we need a capacitor <coughs> okay so in a dram cell we have a capacitor <coughs> and if this capacitor stores charge that means this cell is storing one if the capacitor is not charged that means this cell stores zero and the capacitor is connected to a word line using a switch sorry it is connected to a bit line using a switch so this is switch and another uh, this another terminal is connected to a ground so if it is storing charge let's say it is storing a positive charge here okay. now positive charge means it stores one what we are doing if we have to read this particular cell we will activate we will switch on this this particular switch this cell will get accumulated on this bit line so we have a voltage on bit line and our and at the end we will detect if there is the presence of voltage voltage detector will be here if there is a presence of voltage on this bit line that means this cell stores positive this cell stores one however if there is no charge present so by activating this switch there won't be any voltage on the bit line so our ampl so our uh, detector here will say that there is no voltage on the bit line so that means this cell stores zero so this is our dram cell here you can see that for storing a single bit we require one transistor and one capacitor so as compared to an sram cell the number of components required in dram cell is very small okay so we can see here memory capacity is is more or memory density is more memory density in the sense that here if we have let's suppose x area this is the area of memory in sram okay and if it stores x bits in the same area same x area dram memory of x area will store more than x bits because here a single bit is can be stored using six transistors six transistors means they can take up more area however here only two components are required to, sing, to store a single bit so they they will uh, they will uh, occupy a small area as compared to an sram cell so the size of dram cell is much lesser as compared to an sram cell 
okay so for designing much larger memories okay so for designing larger memories we should design those memories based on dram cells so if you if you have seen in your processor specification of your processors that we are using most of our memories rams that we say these are made of drams they those are dram memories okay how are smaller memories like caches okay and there are some buffers also translation look aside buffer and many other things caches are very small structures and those small structures are made of srams so small memories are made of srams and larger memories are made of drams so why we are making some memories using srams is that sram rams are fast as compared to drams okay and drams consume more power i, I will show you here why drams consume more power as compared to, to srams okay that's why in why wherever we require a fast memory small and fast memory we will use sram memory wherever we require a larger memory with uh, with less uh, less speed as compared to a smaller memory we will take dram based memories so that's why our rams in our processors are made of drams and our caches are mostly made of srams okay so each dram cell the structure of dram cell is this is the structure of dram cell this is our word line and this is our bit line so in a state of two bit line is in sram cell here we have only one bit line and the word line has same functionality as in sram cells okay so since we have already discussed how we can make greater sram memories okay using sram cells the similar procedure can be applied for dram modules as well so using a dram cells using dram cells we can create larger memories fine so you may have uh, you may have seen one point here uh, that if we have a dram cell here and that is storing some charge let's say this is storing some charge this capacitor whenever i want to read data from dram cell unlike uh, sram cells whenever i have to read data so this charge will appear here on the bit line okay fine and based on the voltage of, of this bit line i can determine whether there is a there is uh, there is some charge stored or not if the charge is stored we infer that it means 1 if the charge is not stored we say it means 0 okay so based on the storage of charge on dram cells we can determine whether there we have 1 or 0 how are one main disadvantage of dram cells is that since we have a capacitor here capacitor is here and we know capacitor leaks char charge with time so even my memory is idle power is switched on but the memory is idle nothing is going on but power uh, it leaks charge so by leaking charge means that even if our memory is connected to our processor okay and we are not doing anything with the memory we are not disturbing the memory okay and the power is on power is there still without disturbing the memory there is a possibility that this capacitor will lose its charge lose its charge and since it was storing one that means charge was there after some time it will become itself zero so we lost the information stored in the cell and what was the reason because capacitors leak charge okay to overcome this disadvantage of dram cells we have to continuously or repeatedly refresh the dram cell okay what does this mean that what we have to do continuously is that continuously we have to read the cell 
find out the charge stored in the cell if there is no charge do nothing if there is charge stored in the cell for example charge is stored in this capacitor then charge it again so that it's store it, the charge stored on the capacitor comes to its initial charge for example initially we have charged it 1 volt this capacitor after some time there is some leakage of charge and let's say the voltage has reached to 0.7 volt so we have to refresh this cell after some time to take the voltage back to 1 volt okay so for dram cells we have to repeatedly refresh the memory even if the memory is string idle for example in sram memories even my memory is connected power is on so the information will stay there okay however if power is turned on we know that information will 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 go uh, go out there won't be any information stored however if power is turned on and we have stored something in sram memory there is no need to refresh that memory charge won't go uh, voltage won't go anywhere in sram memory however in dram memory even if the power is connected still there are chances that the capacitors will lose charge and because of losing charge they will lose the information stored in those capacitors so for overcoming such loss of charge or such loss of information we have to repeatedly refresh the dram cells okay a refreshing dram cells means that for each cell we have to find out what is the charge contained and we have to pre we have to recharge that particular capacitor okay so that we overcome this charge leakage phenomena so the additional circuit that is required for uh, for drams as compared to the srams is that dram is required a refreshing circuit so we require refresh circuit for drams and this circuit the aim of this circuit is to refresh all the possible dram cells in the dram memory the remaining architecture is same whatever was there for the sram uh, sram memory the architecture remains the same only difference is that in a uh, in the uh, in that in that particular sram we were requiring pre charging circuit but in dram us we don't require a pre charging circuit instead we require a refresh circuit okay so this was all about the dram cells and as i said our ram is made of drams dram kind of memory and our small memories like caches they are made of srams why dram is their capacity per unit area is more as compared to the srams however why we are using sram for caches because they are fast now we have another kind of memory that we usually come uh, come across is the rom read only memory you may be well aware that a rom is a memory where we have stored something and that something remains there forever okay let's say i have a rom that stores 4 bits and the 4 bits are 0 1 zero, 0 let's say i have to design a rom it should contain these 4 bits we know that we can read these four bits but we cannot write something new into the rom so we have to design a rom and that rom should be able to store these four bits 0 1 0 let's see how we can design a rom that can store these four bits so for designing a rom we want to design a rom and that rom should store these four bits that means it should have four cells four memory cells okay cell 1 cell 2 cell 3 and cell 4 and these four cells this cell should store zero this should store one this should store zero and this one 
okay and we should not be able to change this zero from zero to one likewise for other bits okay so our first aim to design a cell to design a cell that can store zero and to design another cell that can store one let's say this is cell zero this is cell one so we have to design a cell that can store zero and design a memory cell that can store one and this cell the cell zero this should not rewrite its data there should not be a possible scenario of rewriting the data likewise for cell one let's see cell zero okay let's design cell zero cell zero will be like this we have a switch and we will connect it in a state of capacitor in in our dram cell we will directly connect this to a ground okay and here we will have a bit line this will be our word line let's say this is my cell let's see what it stores this is my cell memory cell okay what for reading the data from this cell what we are doing we are activating this line and we are applying a voltage on bit line apply voltage so this word line is activated activated this means this circuit is completed so applying a voltage this goes to where ground so this ground makes this voltage equal to zero and after applying the voltage at the same time we sense the voltage on this bit line what will be the voltage on this bit line the voltage will be zero that means the data stored on this cell is zero so this cell will always store zero can we rewrite its architecture no this we cannot rewrite neither its architecture nor the value stored in this particular cell so this cell will always store zero okay likewise we have cell 1 for example the cell 1 will be like this this will be an open circuit no no connection is there from this point to this point and this is our bit line let's see what this type of cell activate uh, uh, store stores so we will apply voltage applying voltage here gives a positive voltage on this bit line so we we have to activate this word line so this voltage goes here since the circuit is has ended here so voltage will remain here on this bit line okay on this particular bit line we will sense a voltage here so uh, when we sense the voltage what will be the voltage present on this bit line it will be a positive voltage okay sensing a positive voltage means this cell stores one sorry so in previous cell we were connecting the circuit to a ground and that ground was able to make this make this voltage equal to zero and by sensing the voltage it was giving us zero that means this cell store is zero and here we are disconnecting these two lines that means our that means our voltage here that we have applied on bit line for reading the data that won't go to the ground that will remain there and our our circuit here it will sense a positive voltage and imp it implies that this particular cell stores one okay so we have two different types of cells cell which can store always zero and this cell which always stores one this will never store zero and this will never store one it will always store zero and this will always store one so this will be our cell zero and this will be our cell one okay so our rom will be it will have four cells cell zero cell one cell zero and cell one so this will store zero this will store one this will store zero this will store one so our rom memory 
that was required that should store 0 1 0 1 this will be the architecture of the ROM so as I said there are two types of cells cell 0 and cell 1 cell 0 is a cell that stores always 0 and cell 1 stores 1 so we have memory cells two different types of memory cells in ROM so one memory cell always stores 0 and one memory cell always stores so having a ROM, when we have designed a ROM with these cells, with organization of cell 0 and cell 1, different cell 0 and cell 1 is combined together to form a ROM, we cannot change data stored on the RAM, ROM. The data will remain whatever it was, uh, it was kept there at the time of design point. So we cannot change data in the ROM at later point. Okay. So another type of memory that is used is the PROM, Programmable ROM. Programmable ROM is a ROM that can be written once, only once. We cannot change the structure of that particular ROM after that. So we can read data, we can write data once and then we can read that particular data again and again. Okay. However, for writing, we can write only once. We cannot write again and again. So the PROM, programmable ROM, the type of cells that are there in the PROM, it is made of such kind of cells. So we have a cell here. They have the same structure with some minor differences. Here we have a fuse. And it is connected to ground okay so this is our uh, prom cell so our memory will be made of what cells prom cells so let's say i have prom cells one two three four. so these are my prom cells prom cell one prom cell two prom cell three prom cell four okay so here i am only showing four cells for the uh, for understanding the concept. So let's say I, I have this prom and in this particular prom I want to store 1001. Okay. And I am saying that after storing 101, I can read this data repeatedly, but I cannot write some new data in the prom. So first of all, I have to write this 100. So this cell should store 1, this should store 0, this should store 0, this should store 1. Okay. So for storing 1, what I am going to do that I am going to cut this circuit here. Because after cutting the circuit, this point will get disconnected from this point. These two points will get disconnected. So this will equivalent to cell 1 that we have used in ROM. Okay. So uh, for disconnecting the circuit, I will send a strong charge through this line, strong charge. That char charge will break this fuse. Breaking this fuse means the circuit will get disconnected. Okay. After disconnecting the circuit, this cell will always store one. So I will have a P1 cell here. The cell where the fuse has been broken. And for storing zero, I won't send a strong current through this cell, through this prom cell, strong current so that this fuse is broken. I will keep this fuse intact. This is broken only if I send a strong current, a very large amount of voltage through this bit line. Since I want that this cell should always store zero, so it will remain zero here. Okay. The same cell will be used here and for P4, I have to send a strong voltage through this line so that the fuse is broken. Here, my cell will be the cell 1 that will store 1. So, I am able to program this particular memory. So, now I can read this data, uh, I can read this data again and again. Now, can I write some new data in this particular prompt? So for writing, let's say I have to change one, this particular bit from one to zero. Can I change it? For changing it, I have to, 
for changing it from one to zero, I have to connect to this point and this point. And using a software approach, I cannot connect this line and this line. So for connecting these two lines, I have to fix the memory by bringing it to some hardware design. Okay, so one will remain here always. Okay. Likewise, other bits will remain there. So this is the example of PROM and we also discussed about the ROM. So I hope you, you understood the structure of RAM, what are the cells that compose RAM, what are the cells that compose our caches, what type of memory cells are required for designing ROM and what type of memory cells are required for designing uh, uh, okay. The another type of memory is CAM, content addressable memory. So, uh, since this particular memory is not in the scope of our course, so uh, for uh, for understanding the cam, uh, cam or content addressable memory, this is usually the uh, this is usually in uh, postgraduate uh, computer architecture courses, or we can say high performance computing courses. So here I am. Uh, I will only give a brief uh, de uh, description of cam cell or cam memory. So basically, our previous memories. So we were sending an address. And based on the address, we were getting the data. Okay, so in our previous memories, our input was address and output was data. This was input, this was output. However, in content addressable memory, what we are doing, we are giving the data. Okay. Content addressable memory compares this data with the data stored in the memory. For example, this is memory. Okay. Content addressable memory takes the data, compares this data with all the locations. And wherever this data matches with a particular location, it gives output the address of that location. So cam memory takes data as input and gives address of data as output. Address of that particular memory location where this particular data is stored. This is the usage of content addressable memory. So this was all about the all about different types of memories that are used in computer uh, in our modern processors. Most of the memories, the uh, almost all the memories are uh, are made of these different kinds of structures, uh, uh, DRAMs, SRAMs, or uh, these uh, PROM type of cells or content addressable memory. So uh, I think the the different components or the different logic circuits and sequential uh, both combinational and sequential logic circuits that we discussed in in today's lecture and and in last two lectures, I think these are the all all the digital logic systems or digital lo logic components that will be required in designing a processor for RISC-V instruction set architecture. So for our next lecture, we will start designing a processor, basic processor for RISC-V instruction set architecture and for designing that particular processor, all the components that we discussed, digital logic components in, in, in last two or three lectures, those components will be used to design the processor for that particular instruction set architecture. So let's meet in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.